Have you ever wondered why rubber is such an essential material in the millions of products we use every single day? From tires to medical gloves, natural rubber is present everywhere. But how exactly does its journey begin? Let's dive into and explore the fascinating and intriguing process, starting from the rubber tree all the way to the products that have become indispensable in our daily lives. The process starts with the careful selection of high-yielding rubber tree clones. Young saplings spend their initial growth phase in nurseries, where they are nurtured under controlled conditions to ensure their health and vitality. Once they are ready, the saplings are transplanted into plantations, forming endless rows of thriving trees. Farmers space the trees at appropriate intervals to ensure they receive sufficient sunlight and airflow, key factors for healthy and sustainable growth. Patience is a cornerstone of rubber farming. Rubber trees require six to seven years to mature before their latex can be harvested. During this time, farmers meticulously maintain the plantations, which includes weeding, fertilizing, and monitoring for pests and diseases, while rubber trees are remarkably resilient. They still need special care to reach their maximum potential. When rubber trees reach the age of six to seven years, they enter the latex harvesting phase. The process begins with the careful act of making a thin, spiral-shaped incision on the tree's bark. This task must be performed with great precision, removing only the outer layer of bark without damaging the inner cambium layer where the latex vessels are located. The ideal time for harvesting latex is early in the morning, between 4 and 8 a.m. During this period, the internal pressure within the tree is high, combined with optimal temperature and humidity, allowing the latex to flow more smoothly and efficiently. Farmers with skilled and deliberate movements work their way from tree to tree, leaving clean and precise incisions. The milky white latex slowly drips down, collecting into small cups attached to the trunks of the trees. After a few hours, when the cups are full, farmers return to collect the latex. Typically, each tree is tapped once every two days, and the tapping position is rotated periodically to prevent long-term damage to the tree. A single rubber tree can produce latex for 20 to 25 years if tapped correctly, underscoring the importance of sustainability in this industry.
After being harvested, natural rubber latex must be processed quickly to prevent spoilage, as it is highly sensitive to environmental factors like temperature and humidity. The first step involves filtering the latex through sieves or meshes to remove dirt, debris, and bark fragments, ensuring the material meets the required cleanliness standards for the subsequent processing stages. Next, the liquid latex is mixed with common coagulants, such as formic acid or acetic acid, causing it to transition from a liquid to a solid state. This process forms complete coagulated rubber blocks that are more convenient for further processing. Once coagulated, the rubber blocks are transferred to specialized pressing machines. These devices remove excess water and press the rubber into thin sheets with uniform thickness, ensuring they meet the consistency required for the next stages of processing. This step not only enhances uniformity, but also optimizes efficiency during handling. These rubber sheets, now standardized in size, are easier to transport and store. Following this, the sheets undergo a drying phase either by being naturally sun-dried under appropriate temperature conditions or by being dried in modern drying rooms, which significantly saves time and boosts productivity. Rubber doesn't stop at plantations. It is transported to factories, where it undergoes further processing to meet the demands of modern industries. In processing plants, rubber goes through a series of advanced treatments to optimize its properties and shape it for various applications. The first step is vulcanization, a chemical process that uses high temperatures and sulfur to create cross-links between polymer molecules in the rubber. This process significantly enhances durability, elasticity, and resistance to factors such as heat, tension, and chemicals, making rubber more robust and flexible. The primary materials for tire production include natural rubber, synthetic rubber, and over 20 chemical additives such as sulfur, carbon black, antioxidants, and plasticizers. These materials are thoroughly blended in large mixers to form a uniform rubber compound with high strength and excellent heat resistance. The mixture is then pressed into thin rubber sheets and cooled to stabilize quality, preparing it for the next stages. Next, these rubber sheets are passed through extrusion machines to create multiple layers, each serving a specific function in the tire's structure. These layers are carefully stacked and bonded together, During this process, deal wire beads are embedded into the tire edges to enhance rigidity and ensure the tire fits securely onto the wheel rim. The inner liner, responsible for retaining air, is added first, followed by the outer layer, giving the tire its final shape. If you enjoyed it, please share your thoughts in the comments below. 
Have you ever thought about the effort behind the rubber products you use daily? Don't forget to like, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you won't miss our upcoming documentary videos. See you in the next video.